kind of related to that. Uh, are you guys going to listen to the Red Scare interview with Bannon? Uh, I listened to half of it. Um, like, I boring. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like the yeah. thing I would say is like, I, I don't, I think that they actually did a totally fine job of showing that he's pretty boring. I don't know if that's how they would interpret what they did. It doesn't matter to me. I think that, again, this is another thing. Like, this guy is a mass figure. Mm -hmm. In his case, he's not a neutral figure. Like, that's someone who does need to be confronted and competed against aggressively. But the idea, like, this isn't like somebody who's got, like, three Twitter followers and writes, like, stupid blog posts and they're going to get amplified. This is somebody who helped elect somebody president of the United States. Uh, And... You know, I definitely heard like a big takeaway I had was, okay, you talk all this populist stuff. Why don't you support single payer? And basically he just ended up like, I mean, basically, honestly, actually basically sounding like a Democrat, which is kind of funny (laughs) (laughs) with all of his like prevaricating and bullshit. I do think that the left can be much more confident in like, look, if I interviewed Steve Bannon, it would be a different flavor of interview. Mm-hmm. But I think that there is no, like, if even that interview, which wasn't aggressive, but it was not just agreeing. They asked him questions. He didn't look great. He sounded, frankly, really boring. Like, we can have the confidence to engage in that. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing. Like, wherever this note, like... There's some notion that developed somehow that we can't be out there like taking on these battles. And I got to tell you too, you know, I'm not, I'm not somebody who like pops off on, you know, social, but in, about these sort of things, but some people then like, you know, are very concerned about like, you know, having these kind of debates with somebody like Bannon and arguments, uh, but then also kind of talk about being ready to do like a different, much more aggressive mode of politics. Right. And it's like, uh, baby steps, like (laughs) start with all aggressive modes of politics. So I, I didn't hear all of it from what I heard. He didn't sound impressive to me. And I think that honestly, I think why help, uh, someone like that cultivate a mystique. I mean, it's just some fucking baby boomer, who, I mean, look, I wish that Steve Bannon had the success he wanted to have in the 80s because he wouldn't be fucking <laughs> being a massive pain in the ass today, right? Like, that's my interpretation. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm probably not going to listen to it. I mean, I wasn't in, in too interested. If, if, it, if something pops off online and there's a clip, maybe I'll watch that, but no. Nah. Also, Bannon's been sidelined, too. Like, he's he was, he was, he, he, you know, he definitely had his hand in what's going on today, but I think that the the rights developing in, in different directions too. Like if what I'm saying is like if there's people to be like looking at to sort of understand what the rights strategy are, I think that there's probably are different Tucker's areas more relevant. relevant. Yeah, I Tucker's, think actually I Tucker's think Tucker's more probably, relevant. Yeah. I mean Tucker is somebody and 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 again, I I really think these guys are totally beatable mm-hmm. with the right kind of message. Um that is a universalist one, a fundamentally anti-racist one, and a materialist one. I have no doubt. And I, and I, you know, I, I think like, I, I genuinely think the attitude can be a lot more confident. So I didn't have a problem with them doing that. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.